Deep beneath the cold ocean, spiny sea urchins look like worthless black orbs. But once cracked open, they reveal uni, the golden treasure that melts on the tongue. Still, behind that fleeting taste lies a harsh truth. Only one in a hundred urchins is good enough to become a hundred dollar delicacy. Welcome back to AgroWorks USA, where we uncover the hidden systems behind the world's most extraordinary foods. Today, we'll follow the incredible journey of sea urchins, from hand harvesting in kelp forests to the meticulous processing lines that prepare their fragile golden lobes. We'll see why Japan consumes over 80% of the world's uni, why demand keeps rising even as kelp forests shrink, and how new indoor farms are trying to supply this rare luxury. You'll discover why the value of uni can climb from a few dollars at sea to hundreds in a single premium tray. Stay with us and don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss another deep dive into the hidden world of food and farming. Sea urchins inhabit rocky coastlines, coral reefs, and especially kelp forests, the underwater rainforests of the sea. Out of nearly 950 known species, only about 18 are commercially harvested, and just a select few, like California's red sea urchin or Japan's black urchin, yield the large golden gonads valued as uni. Their diet of kelp directly shapes flavor and texture, making ocean health inseparable from market quality. Kelp forests do more than feed urchins. They absorb carbon, buffer coastlines, and provide shelter for countless marine species. Yet this balance is fragile. When predators such as sea otters or sea stars decline, certain urchins, like the purple species in California, multiply unchecked. In less than a decade, they destroyed over 90% of the region's kelp, leaving behind barren seafloors stripped of life. These urchin barrens reveal a paradox. The same creature that sustains gourmet markets can also devastate ecosystems. The story of uni is therefore not just about taste and price, but about the ocean's capacity to endure. For generations, the quest for sea urchins has remained a job for the bold. Along the rugged coasts of California, Chile, and Japan, Divers venture into icy waters before sunrise, chasing the elusive golden prize hidden behind sharp spines. Equipped with oxygen tanks, thick gloves, and handmade rakes, they descend to rocky seabeds where kelp sways like underwater forests. Each urchin must be pried off stone by hand, inspected on the spot, and slipped into mesh pouches before surfacing. It is slow, painstaking work, yet this method ensures that only mature, marketable urchins are taken leaving juveniles to replenish the next season. But tradition comes with risk. Divers face 12-hour days in waters that sap body heat, with strong currents threatening to sweep them away. A misstep can mean a puncture from venom-tipped spines or a fatal entanglement below. Decades ago, a skilled diver could haul 2,000 pounds of high-quality urchins in a single day. Now, with kelp forests collapsing, they return with just 300 to 500 pounds. Each dive is a gamble, whether the shells hold only emptiness or the golden uni worth hundreds of dollars. Do you want to experience holding the special rake that divers use to pry sea urchins from the seabed? Are you impressed by the patience required to handpick each one? Remember to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you never miss the next AgroWorks USA video. As wild stocks decline, farmers are turning to controlled aquaculture to secure the future of uni. Inside high-tech facilities in Japan, South Korea, and Norway, 
Sea urchins begin life in hatcheries where broodstock are induced to spawn under sterile conditions. Microscopic larvae are fed cultivated microalgae until they form shells and settle onto artificial reefs. From here, they move into indoor tanks or sea cages, replicas of their natural environment, carefully managed for water flow, oxygen, and salinity. Indoor systems allow year-round production, shielding urchins from predators and unstable kelp supplies. Farmers feed them kelp or seaweed substitutes, fine-tuned to boost gonad size, flavor, and color. In floating sea cages, however, urchins grow more slowly, exposed to the rhythms of tides and natural food chains, but their uni is often richer and more complex in taste. The challenge is scale. Survival rates from larvae to adult hover around 10%, making efficiency critical. Yet each successful harvest brings hope, proof that with engineering and patience, sea urchins can be farmed sustainably, transforming a fragile delicacy into a renewable global industry. When sea urchins reach market size, often the size of a clenched fist after 12 to 18 months, the most delicate stage begins, harvest. In indoor farms, workers carefully scoop urchins from tanks by hand or nets, avoiding cracks that would ruin the fragile shells. In open sea cages, divers or specialized lifting systems hoist cages filled with mature urchins, each one bristling with sharp spines, yet carrying golden treasure inside. Timing is critical. Harvests peak during spawning season, when gonads are swollen with nutrients and flavor. From the farm or cage, the clock starts ticking. Sea urchins must stay alive and intact until processing, so they are placed into perforated plastic crates lined with damp cloth or seawater circulation systems. These containers protect against crushing while allowing oxygen flow, crucial for preserving freshness. Within hours, shipments are loaded onto refrigerated trucks or boats bound for processing plants. Every delay risks losing value. One broken shell or dried out gonad can slash a tray's price from hundreds to just a fraction. Precision in harvest and transport ensures uni arrives at factories in pristine condition, ready to be transformed into luxury food. Did you know that the peak harvest season for premium uni falls between May and August? Do you believe that just a few hours of delay can ruin the value of an entire uni batch? Let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Inside the processing plant, the real treasure of the sea urchin is revealed. Workers split open each shell with a specialized blade, exposing five golden lobes of uni arranged like petals in a star. But this is only the beginning. With tweezers and spoons, every fragment of membrane, seaweed, or grit is removed by hand. Even the smallest tear in a lobe can cut its value in half, so each motion is slow, steady, and precise. Out of a hundred urchins, only a handful yield lobes worthy of the highest grade. The next step is sorting. Gonads are carefully graded by size, color, and firmness. A deep yellow or bright orange shade signals premium uni, while paler pieces are sold at lower tiers. To stabilize texture, premium uni may be gently rinsed in brine or treated with a light alum solution before moving to final packing. Here the artistry meets luxury. Each lobe is laid by hand into elegant wooden trays or clear premium boxes, arranged as though it were jewelry. Sealed, chilled, and shipped overnight, these trays can command $100 to $500 each, tiny packages of the ocean's most fragile delicacy. Beneath its fragile golden texture, uni fuels a seafood economy worth billions. 
Japan alone accounts for more than 80% of global premium consumption, with uni featured at sushi bars and luxury kaiseki restaurants where demand never slows. The United States and Europe follow as expanding markets, importing thousands of tons each year to meet the appetite of fine dining menus. For divers and farmers, the numbers are transformative. A daily haul of 500 to 1,000 pounds of sea urchins may yield only a few dozen trays of top-grade uni, but each tray can sell for $100 to $500. What begins as a spiny shell on the ocean floor becomes a luxury ingredient traded worldwide, sustaining coastal villages and powering international exports. Analysts estimate the uni trade generates several billion dollars annually, supported by both wild harvests and modern aquaculture. From California's kelp forests to Japan's indoor farms, sea urchins link small fishing communities with the world's most exclusive dining rooms, a vivid example of nature, craftsmanship, and global taste converging into one of the ocean's most profitable value chains. Do you see uni as a culinary icon or a symbol of luxury? Do you think uni could one day become a global export industry on the scale of shrimp or salmon? Share your opinions below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep exploring with AgroWorks USA. Behind the glittering trays of uni lies a fragile balance. Decades of over-harvesting, warming oceans, and collapsing kelp forests have already pushed red urchin populations into decline. In California, purple sea urchins exploded after sea star predators vanished, devouring over 90% of kelp beds and leaving barren urchin barrens. Such ecosystem shifts threaten both biodiversity and the long-term supply of marketable uni. Meanwhile, aquaculture offers hope but remains difficult. Survival rates from larvae to adulthood average less than 10%, and farming requires precise water quality, steady kelp supplies, and costly infrastructure. These challenges raise urgent questions. Can global demand continue to grow without exhausting natural stocks? Future sustainability will depend on innovations, restoring kelp forests, developing efficient indoor farming, and enforcing stricter harvest regulations. Only by combining conservation with technology can uni remain both a luxury on the table and a living treasure of the sea. From the jagged shells of sea urchins emerges uni, an ingredient so delicate it dissolves on the tongue, yet so rare it can fetch hundreds of dollars per tray. This paradox defines Uni's story. A creature once dismissed as a nuisance on the seabed, now celebrated as a jewel of global cuisine. But every bite of buttery Uni comes at a cost. Fragile ecosystems, risky dives, and uncertain harvests. As demand rises, the world faces a choice. Exploit until depletion or innovate toward balance. What do you think? Can luxury and sustainability truly coexist in the Uni trade? Share your thoughts below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more stories from AgroWorks USA.